This is Twit. Uh, this is important, and everybody gets to participate. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is not good. Uh, okay, so the, the, the bottom line is, might be time once again to check for router firmware updates. Gosh, darn but it. I know, but you can go to grc.sc and this episode number, grc.sc slash, uh, what is this, uh, 854, 854. Yeah. and that will tell you uh -oh. whether you're okay or not. And uh, Maybe is it set up? It should have given you more than that already. Let me go directly. There we go. Ah, uh, there you go. Probing yep. my port, two twenty thousand and five. Yes. Okay, that's not a uh, port I'm familiar with. Not a port anybody's familiar with. Okay, so uh -oh. the security. Yeah, it's your stealth. Good. The security research firm Sentinel One has discovered that some common code licensed by a number of prominent router manufacturers contains a highly critical remotely exploitable flaw. Among the routers known to be affected are those by Netgear, TP-Link, Tenda, Edamax, D-Link, and Western Digital. Holy cow. Uh, I, I know. So here's what we know. They, or rather he at Sentinel-1, his name is Max, uh, discovered a high severity flaw in the what's known as the K well K codes is the company K codes net USB kernel module used by that large number of network device vendors and affecting millions of end user router devices. This allows attackers to remotely exploit the vulnerability to execute code in the kernel. Sentinel Labs, Max's company, began the disclosure process last year on the 9th of September, and the patch was sent to licensee router vendors on the 4th of October. So it should be incorporated into router firmware updates by now. That's more than 90 days. At this time, Sentinel-1 has not discovered evidence of in-the-wild abuse. Okay, so here, in the author's voice, is how this all began. He said, as a number of my projects start, when I heard that Pwn to Own Mobile 2021 had been announced, I set about looking at one of the targets. Having not looked at the Netgear device when it appeared in the 2019 contest, I decided to give it a look over. While going through various paths through various binaries, I came across a kernel module called NetUSB. As it turned out, this module was listening on TCP port 20005 on the IP 0, .0, .0, .0, 0, 0.0.0.0, provided that there were no firewall rules to, in place to block it, and typical consumer routers don't have any, that would mean it was listening on the WAN as well as the LAN. He says, who wouldn't love a remote kernel bug? NetUSB is a product developed by K-Codes. It's designed to allow remote devices in a network to interact with USB devices connected to a router. For example, you could interact with a printer as though it is plugged directly into your computer via USB. This requires a driver on your computer that communicates with the router through this kernel module. Of course, you don't have to be using this to have it there alive and running in your router. If it just has that net USB feature, which they licensed, the router manufacturer licensed from K codes. Okay, he then proceeds to provide a detailed takedown description of his successful hunt for a critical vulnerability in the K code code. He discovered a dangerous switch function driven by a command type that's provided by the user. And the rest does not end well. I provided a link in the show notes for anyone who wants all the gory details. So it's insane. And it is so wrong that this buggy K-code service 
is bound to the router's WAN interface. Essentially, 0.0.0.0 is all interfaces on the stack, as opposed to, you know, if, if it were bound um, to 192.168.0.1 or .1.1, that is bound to the to the um, to the gateway interface, then it would only be listening on local ports inside the LAN, which is what everyone wants. Nobody wants th this thing listening on the WAN, but it turns out by default, it is. That means it is instantly discoverable by bad guys anywhere, and of course by Shodan. It also means that it's instantly testable, as we started out talking about, by any port probe. And I just happen to offer a free online port probing service. So the other link I've provided is a grc.sc shortcut to instantly allow our listeners and anyone to check any router they're behind for this vulnerability. Open your browser and just put in grc.sc forward slash 854 this week's episode number. This will jump you to GRC's Shields Up custom port probe preloaded to check port 20005. Uh, you'll see on your browser screen, it sends a bunch of TCP SYN packets spread out over a few seconds. Uh, I think it's five seconds. I send one every half second so as not to overload anything and to redundantly send TCP SINs to make sure that we'll see if we get back a, a SYNAC. Um, that will be sent to the IP address also shown on that page to quickly and privately check your browser's publicly exposed WAN interface to determine whether it's accepting incoming TCP connections over port 20005. It should not be. If it is, unplug it. I mean, really, <laughs> unplug it. Or if you can, add a firewall rule, if your router allows you to, to explicitly block that port on the WAN interface until you're able to update your router's firmware. Hopefully, for an uh, uh, update is available. As I said, Max, who discovered and responsibly disclosed this and waited patiently for more than 90 days until last Tuesday the 11th before going public with it, finished his disclosure by writing, this vulnerability affects millions of devices around the world and in some instances may be completely remotely accessible. Due to the large number of vendors that are affected by the vulnerability, we reported this vulnerability directly to K codes to be distributed among their licensees instead of targeting just, for example, the TP link or the Netgear device in the contest. This ensures that all vendors receive the patch instead of just one during the contest. While we're not going to release any exploits for it, there is a chance that one may become public in the future, despite the rather significant complexity involved in developing one. We recommend that all users follow the remediation information above in order to reduce any potential risk. And we have another example of something good that came from the Pwn the Pwn to Own competition. Now, let me just say, I did read in detail his posting. He did not develop an exploit, but he walked anybody who's competent right up to one. Um, also, this is because this is a common code across a large number of, of routers, all Linux based, the tools are there for developing it. That means that if you create one exploit, you literally, you're getting millions of devices, which are trivial to find, and you're able to execute your own code on those all common Linux platforms. So it's not just one make and model. It's just not one make. It is cross vendor. This is really going to be juicy. Now, you now to be clear, if it says closed, are you okay? Instead of stealth? Obviously, yes, open is bad. Open is, yes. Open is the bad news. Closed is fine. Oh, okay. Um, men, yeah, closed is fine. Uh, uh, it, all it means is that your router bounced back a no. It responded. No, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, probably sent back a TCP reset saying, you know, I got your probe, but I'm not open for business. That's fine. Stealth is cooler. It just means that no no response was returned. It's no one no one's business that there's even anything at that IP listening. Open is the danger. And you can't and so, do this from outside your house. You have to do it from within. The network. correct, correct. Uh, I I did that. I that's clearly the design intent of shields up because otherwise it would allow bad people to, to probe other people's ips not good and yeah. <laughs> that would have been not good yeah. yes yeah yeah so you've got to do it you know from the land what you want to verify but just again let this is not a small thing let let me please encourage our listeners grc.sc slash you know 854 if you're at work and and you've got uh you know a, a family member or kids are at home give them a call have them do this uh you know you definitely want the, this thing there's no way this is not going to be exploited there's no way because it's linux because it's cross browser i mean cross uh router vendor there, there's just no way this is not going to end up getting exploited.